After one of the most crazy financial, most chaotic times of 2020, it's finally here. What am I talking about? The second stimulus check coming your way. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you how to maximize this $600. It's gonna be $600, it's gonna be $2,000, whatever it is. I'm gonna share how to maximize $600 into millions in this episode of the Seven Fear Squad. Happening in three, two, one, let's go. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy Matt Sapala here, hailing to you from Oak Brook Terrace, Illinois, a direct west suburb of downtown Chicago. And I want to welcome you to the first official week of New Year's 2021. We are here. So after this crazy chaotic year of 2020, a pandemic, we're now here to talk about a conversation about how not just to survive, but how to thrive. If you can tell from my voice, I've been raspy the last three or four days and nothing but nonstop action here, New Year's Eve. Uh, we had uh, some, some guests here from out of town. We had two, 300 people here celebrating from all across the country in our office here in, in Oak Brook. And we're talking about this conversation about to how to play offense in 2021. But just so you know, full disclaimer up front, if you were thinking that this was a get rich quick type video, that you are one of those people I love to avoid, which is highly ambitious, but lazy people, please cancel and log off my YouTube channel right now. Don't want to waste your time. But for those of you that want to stick around, that's actually, that actually wants to work for a living, that actually wants to put some elbow grease behind their efforts and their journey towards making seven figures, please stay tuned. So there's two different ways to look at the $600 stimulus check. Number one, you can look at it this way. Right now, man, I'm going to enjoy my money. I'm going to spend my money. I'm going to get the things I never got through Thanksgiving, through the holidays, through Christmas. I'm going to go get my PS5 right now. Or the second way you can look at it, which is the way I looked at it, because <laughs> I'm about to date myself here real quick, because I did that when the PS1 came out. Kind of learned a little bit. But how you can look at this $600 stimulus check is a way to plant this as a seed into the ground. You plant the seed. You cultivate the seed. You work the seed. And then eventually... It becomes a harvest much greater than what you thought it would be to frivolously spend it in the first 30 seconds when you received it. So I just picked out a few things here, several things here that I attempted to do when I got a little bit of money. I was a single dad. I was a, had custody of my kids. I just left the military. And I did a couple of things to help me outside of my jobs as a Jiffy Lube hood technician, Olive Garden server, and a YMCA lifeguard. Uh, I attempted to go out and resell stuff. So you go out to... Garage sales. Now, you, I was going through garage sales back in the day, but today, what's the garage sale today? Facebook Marketplace, eBay. You can go to consignment stores. You can go to secondhand stores. You can buy things for cheap, then flip it and sell it. I'll give me an example. If you take the 600 bucks and you find some shoes, uh, you find some clothes, uh, you find, hard, uh, uh, for example, com uh, computer gear, and you, you splice up, you, you, you uh, reformat the hard drive, or you find some camera gear, right, and you clean it up, and you fix it back up, and make it good as new, you can flip it again for double the price. So you bought it for $600, you can flip it for $1,200. Now, here's the math. If that's what your game plan is, you buy things cheap, you fix it, resell it, then assuming that you get double the price, you got to do that 833 times to finally make seven figures, Okay. Does it sound like an impossible task? That's the numbers. This is what I call, by the way, doing the millionaire math. Anything, financially speaking, can be accomplished if you just know the numbers. So oftentimes people say, I'm gonna be financially free, I'm gonna be independent. Great, what's the number? What's the math? How are you gonna get there? What's your blueprint? Well, in this example, the blueprint is reselling. The blueprint is going to eBay, going to Facebook Marketplace, going to garage sales, going to consignment secondhand stores to say, I'm gonna buy things cheap, dust it off, fix it, resell it, polish it up, make it as good as new, boom. Same thing you can do with also cars. If you can find a car for two, three hundred dollars cheap, and you got the skills to, to to change the brakes and make it safe again, make it uh, for somebody to to to, to graduate uh, high school or college and want a cheap car, you sell it to them for a couple thousand dollars. Then you just just do the difference here, do the difference in the math. But in this example, if you buy something for six hundred dollars and you sell it for twelve hundred dollars, you got to do that eight hundred and thirty-three times for you now to make seven figures for you to make a million dollars. The second one is start a t-shirt company. You know, I was with Dan Alark a couple years ago, how he took a simple $1,200 investment and he created a $100 million company out of it called Grunt Style, veteran entrepreneur. But it's, and, and by the way, he sold it to a, an investor group or, or, or earlier last year. But nevertheless, you can take $100, $200, $300, go to a t-shirt designer, 
Uh, I remember uh, 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 earlier last October, we had a conversation with Damon John, who created his clothing line called FUBU. He created a clothing line, created a t-shirt called For Us, By Us, which had a message behind it. And he got the right people to buy it. He sold it out of the trunk of his car in the different boroughs of New York, and he created a brand out of it. And yet LL Cool J, Rock is Gear in a Gap commercial, talking about For Us, By Us, right? And, and, and he basically helped promote his brand. Well, you can create a t-shirt, you get behind the message, you find the right people to do it, you can create a money-making activity, you can even sell it on demand. So in other words, uh, a conversation here is you find a drop ship company to have your design, have your t-shirts, your hats, your sweatshirts, your socks, your backpacks, your pillows, whatever, but they are able to sell it on demand. In other words, you don't inventory it because that's the other way to do it. You can order those things in bulk, which is not advisable because now you have inventory and you don't know what sells. However, you can buy things in bulk. Some, some uh, spaces you can go to to learn how to do that is either A, search for a local vendor. If you're in Seattle, Washington, search for a t-shirt maker, t-shirt designer, Chicago t-shirt designer, LA t-shirt designer, Miami t-shirt designer, New York, etc. I'm sure they're all over the place. Or go to fiverr.com and can find a guy for 25, 35 bucks, 50 bucks to create for you a t-shirt based on your message, based on what you envision to put on that t-shirt. And you can take that design and go to a local vendor and they can make some shirts for you. Or you can go to Shopify and they make it for you on demand. Now, here are the numbers. You take that $600 in seed, that investment, and let's say you buy it uh, in bulk, right? And your profit is $10 per shirt. So you need to sell 100,000 shirts to make your seven figures. But guess what you did? Your $600 flipped to a, mil to a million dollars because you did 100,000 shirts for sale. Knock, knock yourself out, that's how you did it, boom. Or if you are able to make an extra five bucks per shirt, right? The, uh, you go to a local vendor, you're not going through drop ship, it's a little bit more uh, co uh, uh, cost friendly for you because they drop the price because you're using a local vendor versus on demand. You make 15 bucks a shirt, okay? 15 bucks a shirt, you need to sell 67,000 shirts for you to make a million bucks, okay? So along the way, along this journey, you might buy some shirts, sell some shirts, mm, maybe piece a little way for advertising. Buy some shirts, sell some shirts, boom, piece a little bit more for advertising. Or find some people to go sell it for you. You have a street team, right? You go into your local community, you go to a community center, you go to a sports a game, you go to a sports activity, and people are selling shirts to you. Obviously, you got to get the proper licenses and the permits to do that, but that's a way for you to start selling more units of your shirt or clothing design. Next one, in, which is personally what I uh, am starting to get involved in, which is trading cards. I just spent time with my mentor a couple years ago, and I held in my hands, check, take a look at this picture, I held in my hands two hockey cards from 1979 of Wayne Gretzky. At that time, Patrick McDavid purchased those for a little over $400,000. Well, back in December, he sold those cards for $2.1 million. <laughs> Trading cards, you know, it's not like stocks, it's not like bonds, it's a collectible. And it's a rarity, you know why? Because when they print out a rookie card or the second year card or a special uh, a card to, to recognize a player, they're done printing it. So it, it's not like they can reprint it again, unless of course they, they, they have a special reprint version, but the value is in the reprint version. The value is in the original rookie card or the original cards that were created during the first year or second year of that particular player. And how they validate and verify that it's through certification, authentication comes like Beckett and PSA. You send it in, I think it's like 25 or 30 bucks. You take it, you hold on to it for a minute. You pick the right player, you find the right rookie card. And there's a lot of services here. We'll put a website here of a service that I've been taking a look at and studying and understanding the way they understand the marketplace of the sports trading cards uh, marketplace. But you can sell it. You can buy cards uh, on eBay. You can find an online retail location. You get it certified by PSA Beckett. You hold on to it. See what the player does. See if the player knocks out. See if the player wins a championship. See if the player's an MVP. See if the player eventually breaks a league record. And the value of that card goes higher and higher and higher. And this is probably one of the situations here where you probably have to hold on to it for a minute. Back to my example of, uh, of, of uh, Patrick selling his uh, hockey cards for $2.1 million. Could you imagine a kid that got it for 15 cents in 1979? It sold for 
years later? Could you imagine the guy that bought it for $2,000 and sold it for $10,000 years later? Could you imagine the guy that bought it for $10,000 and sold it for $100,000 years later? Could you imagine the person got it for $100,000, tickled pink, and he sold it for $400,000 later? And imagine Patrick B. David when he bought it for $400,000, how he sold it for $2.1 million? See, look at that. So what part of the chain would you like to be a part of? That's the sports card, sports trading card world. And so in this example, okay, a basic fundamental example, you take that 600 bucks, and you're able to sell that card for $600. If you do that, and that's a, a, an average card coming out, I'm not talking about a, a Wayne Gritzy type card, but you take the average player, and it does some things in the league, and his card starts raise, raising in value. You take that same $600, make a $600 profit, you need to do that 1,666 times to make your million dollars. You make $1,200 on a card from a $600 investment, you purchase the cards years later, you sell for 1,200 bucks, you need 833 cards to do that over your lifetime. What happens is you make $2,400 per sale after investing $600 into a card. You make $2,400 in profit per card. Well, you need 416 cards for you to do that with. So does this require you to, a little bit, to do a little bit of studying? Require you to be a little bit more patient? Requires you to actually get in and understand the industry a little bit? Of course. But like I said earlier, this is not a get rich quick video. This is an opportunity for you to look at something and years down the road, years down the road, you'd be happy you watch this video. Because oftentimes, here's the thing. People say, I, I, I need to pay my bills now. I need to pay my bills. I totally understand it. If you got to take some to $600 stimulus check and pay your bills, knock yourself out. However you've been living right now without the stimulus check, you've been making, the, making things do, do not increase your lifestyle. Don't increase your lifestyle while this is taking place. I got one more thing to go through, by the way. Don't increase your lifestyle. That's the problem with people starting making money. As soon as they start making money, they blow it right away on a bigger house, clothes, all these other things outside of reinvesting that back into the machine of which they made that profit. Another, area, another category here is online videos. And we just started dabbling in this too as well. You can make money on YouTube, TikTok, IG, Facebook. And what we discovered, okay, for every thousand views, a, a couple assumptions here, by the way, for every 1,000 views, assuming that you have originally a 4,000 hours of watch time and you have 1,000 subs, you can start trigger, triggering Google AdSense to start paying you. Why? Because here's what YouTube wants. I'll use YouTube right now as an example. Here's what YouTube wants. They want people to watch videos so they can put in advertising. They want people to watch videos and, and people to create a brand or a personality or a channel that attracts eyeballs just like the networks do. So therefore they can put in their ad. They can put in their ads. See, that's what's in it for YouTube. That's what's in it for Facebook. That's what's in it for TikTok and Instagram and any social media platform. How do I get in front of people's eyeballs to sell to an advertiser, to sell to corporate America? Well, they should cut us a big check to put their company ad so people look at their ad to go buy their product. So what's in it for them is to watch your videos to say, okay, if I want 1,000 views, we'll pay you two bucks for every 1,000 views because it gives us an opportunity amongst these views to throw in ads that people may or may not watch. But they're playing the game of probability. They're playing the game of numbers. To say, if I got 1,000 views, 2,000 views, 20,000 views, 100,000 views, and for those views, because you have content and people are constantly watching over and over and over, they can pay you, on, as an example, $2 per 1,000 views. Now, use that as a general rule. Some people get a lot more previews based on their personality or based on a channel. I'm just using this as a general principle. I'm not saying that you, I'm not trying to say, Matt, you said YouTube is paying two bucks. It might be less. What I'm saying is, as a, as a general rule, use, put, this puts you in the ballpark, okay? So in this example, if you want to make a million bucks, you need 500 million total views. You need 500 million total views in this example of using $2 per thousand views for you to make your seven figure income doing YouTube, TikTok, IG, and Facebook. How you, get, how, you, how you get that, is it, is it, is it 100 videos, is it 1,000 videos, is it 10,000 videos, is it 100,000 videos? Well, that's up to you and the quality content you're able to, to broadcast a YouTube channel. Now, here's the thing. YouTube is going to make sure that your content, if it's made for kids, they scrutinize videos that are made for kids. They're going to scrutinize if you use a lot of curse words in your videos. So in other words, you can't say the words of <laughs> All right, you follow me? You can't use those words. They, if they pick it up, 
they might not broadcast your video, which clamps down on your views, which clamps down on the money you can make per that video. So watch your swearing, okay? The topics are important. The length of video is important. Some topics, <clears throat> reaction videos. My reaction to somebody getting knocked out in a fight. My reaction to President Biden now taking on the inauguration of the United States of America. My opinion on this player being drafted. My how-to, five steps on this for how to, make, how to create $600, right? These are topics, value-based type stuff that will cause somebody to watch. And if you cause somebody to watch, guess what? YouTube picks it up and say, oh, we want to advertise on your channel. If we want to advertise on your channel, you then make money. So if you want to take the $600, you want to make your millions, a few other things to consider. What industry are you getting involved in? Oftentimes people work hard in the wrong industry because that industry doesn't pay. It pays for everybody else, but it doesn't pay for the person getting involved in the industry or the product. What product of an industry are you getting involved in? Because depending on the industry, depending on the product, depending on the margin of that product and the, the margin that the industry can pay for that product, you'd be working hard for little money or you can work hard and you make a lot of money. But you got to pick the industry that you make a lot of money per transaction and per sale. Number two, you got to understand sales. You gotta learn how to sell something. And lots of times people think, well, sales is like somebody wins and somebody loses. No, in the right type of sale, there's a win-win type situation. Both parties win. A problem is solved. When a problem is solved by somebody's product or service, the person that provides that also wins too as well. So you gotta learn sales. You gotta learn how to educate people, how to show people that what you do is better than what they're currently doing and how to make their life easier and better after their involvement in you because you're selling them either a product or service. And last but not least, the way to take 600 bucks and to flip it to a million bucks is to work for yourself. The chance of you working for yourself, the fact that you value your time. Uh, I can't tell you how many times that people say, man, I can't do this because I got my job. I can't do this because I got my job. Or they work harder at their job than actually their business or their business endeavors and they want their business endeavor to pay a million bucks. But they work harder at the job. They put more hours and more harder at their job. It doesn't work that way. But if you embrace entrepreneurship, and entrepreneurship comes from the words, the, the, the meaning is one who takes risk. If you're able to embrace that risk, you got to understand too as well, the IRS favors those who are entrepreneurs. It favors those who are creators. It favors those who are makers, not takers. And the makers are the ones who make jobs, who create jobs, okay? And last but not least, what platform? For example, all this stuff is on a platform. What platform are you getting involved in? What platform are you doing business with? Is it by yourself? Could you leverage a platform? Could you leverage a platform where eyeballs are already there? Or are you trying to create your own platform where there's no eyeballs and you try to draw eyeballs? So the reason why people sell on Apple, the reason why people put apps on Google Play Store, the reason why, and, and willing to pay a percentage, the reason, people, reason why people are, are, are buying a franchise and willing to give up either the royalty check or a large percentage of the sales because they are plugging right into a platform because they have to put all the thinking and, and standard operating procedures, uh, the mistakes that somebody would already made, you're learning from the mistakes of other people and therefore you're much more profitable, it's easier for you to do business with and you'll find yourself more profitable long term. Now, let me share with you what I did. When I was in a situation where I wasn't financially ahead, where I wasn't a cash flow for generation millionaire, I learned and picked all the stuff up, combination of all these different things, right? But I need to pay bills right now. So I picked this mystery industry. What mystery industry? I am in the life insurance industry. How I made my money is in the life insurance industry. I got my insurance license in 1999 in the state of California before I moved to Illinois. And I was a producer. And here's how I did the numbers based. Here's how I did the millionaire math. I would make on average $600 in commission per life insurance sale. Now I got two ways to do it. I can either be a producer to do that to make my millions, or I can be a builder. Let's do the math with being a producer. If I was commissioned $600 for every sale I do of life insurance, right? This is a, this is a $100 a month sale. I'm at a 50% commission contract, okay? As a producer, okay? Before I, before I started ratcheting up and started learning more about the industry, I became 130, 140% producer, okay? Because I got really good at this stuff. And, and, and this day, I was just starting up. I took my, actually, I took $500, got an insurance license, got some coaching, got some training, and I started making sales. So in this math, if I was gonna put this millionaire math towards myself, so if I'm doing the math on myself, $600 per commission per case, 
which would be a one to two week sales cycle, okay? I need to sell just under 1,700 life insurance policies by myself. I have a 40 hour work week, 60 hour work week. I got five, six days a week. Back then, I was learning to sell. There was no Zoom, it was all in person in somebody's kitchen table. That was the life of a salesperson in the life insurance industry. Now, with that being said, there's a lot of people that's inside the life insurance industry that you'd never know about making six figures inside the life insurance industry. Now, I've been doing this now for 22 years. I can tell you this, for a large part of those 22 years, I, me, myself, and I have been in a predominantly Caucasian, older male industry that I was trying to make a name in. And lately, the last five years, guess what we started to do? We started to build an agency that started to attract and recruit people of multicultural diversity. And guess what? The math works a lot better when you're building a business versus just selling through a business. And I realized as a salesperson being a producer, individually having to sell and all the pressure and stress on my shoulders, I found it easier to be a builder and build a business equipping people through a standard operating procedure or a system to teach them to do what I do, which is most, what most brokerages do. That's called building an agency, building a business. And guess what? We were able to share the pressure, we were able to share the load. So now, with that being said, instead of making $600 per individual sale with my time, I showed a team of agents how to do that. And I'm making $150 on average per sale. But if you do the math differently, guess what? A million dollars divided by $150 means that 6,700 policies must be sold through my agency. Seems like a daunting number, right? 1,700 versus 6,700 policies. But here's what I learned how to build over time. I've learned how to build people. I learned how to build agents. Now I got the load being shared amongst us of 100 agents selling 6,700 policies per year. So now if I have 67 policies that must be sold per agent and there's 12 months throughout the year, that's a little over five and a half policies per agent per month. Now that's doable. That's doable. And so when I'm looking at, again, all these things I can do to take $600 into millions, your choice. Your choice to learn a skill set, your, your choice to resell, create shirts, buy and sell trading cards, create online videos, your choice. And here's the better part. Who ultimately has the most control over all this? Because he or she that controls your income and the factors that control your income will then control you. So oftentimes people say, man, I need to create multiple streams of income. But here's what I did. I focused on one industry. This is it. I'm going on 22 years. I'm going on 22 years. Now some of you guys say, well, Matt, uh, it's been so long for you to become a millionaire. Well, along the way, I was making six figures. Along the way, I'm making 250. Along the way, I'm making 500,000. I don't have a college degree. I, don't, I didn't go to Stanford, I go to Harvard. I didn't go to Dartmouth. I didn't have a pedigree of people. I, didn't, I came back to Chicago post-military. I had zero people to talk to. I had zero credibility, but I learned one industry. I learned one industry in over a 22 year period. And by the way, I've been making millions for years already. So it's not like in my 22nd year, I started cranking my seven figures. I started, ma I started making seven, uh, seven figures a year. And I, I'm, by the way, I'm talking about cash flow, take home, 14, 15 years into this. So whatever you're doing, ask yourself, project yourself in 2035. Am I making seven figures? Can I take the $600 similar check and be tomorrow's multimillionaire based on what I'm currently doing? And by the way, some of these guys, hugely successful. I'm just sharing with you some options out there. I'm sharing with you what I did. The choice is yours because this allowed me to do this. This allowed me to create a t-shirt line called Seven Figure Squad, sevenfigursquad.com. This allowed me to buy my first Luka Doncic cards, uh, Michael Jordan rookie cards, uh, Walter Payton rookie cards, uh, I just picked up another rookie card, uh, uh, Patrick Mahomes, okay? This allowed me to do this because I wasn't doing YouTube until two, three years ago. But one Mississippi River of cash flow that went wide and deep and solid, of which I had control, allowed me to reinvest into a lot of these other things. Because once you have a Mississippi River cash flow, then you create streams. I didn't make money here, I make money here, I make money here, I make money here, I make money here, all at the same time. And guess what? You don't have streams. You got trickles. Rivers create streams. Streams do not create rivers. Something to consider in 2021. 
Obviously, love to know your thoughts. Love to know your questions, follow-ups, comments. Put them in the section below. And obviously, those are the best ones we pick. We'll be sharing them in the next future episode. And before I wrap up, a few questions I want to ask you. Number one, what kind of life do you want to live? What kind of life do you want to live from here going forward? Because this $600 is just not money for you to blow. It's our money, too. It's the stewardship of everybody in the United States of America that put money inside the tax coffers of the United States of America. This is our money. So how are you going to be a better person in using the stewardship of this $600 for the future that you can say, hey, thank you, Uncle Sam. Thank you, United States of America. This $600 made me millions. By the way, that's what I'm doing right now. Thank you, United States Marine Corps, for helping me create the discipline, work ethic, and the desire to work for nothing for a purpose greater than myself. So I can give back to my community. I can give back to my city. I can give back to the people I love and care about. Number two, second question you got to ask yourself in 2021. The hardships you experienced in 2020. Do you want to experience that again? And if not, What are you gonna change? This should not be a repeat. 2021 should not be a repeat of 2020 if even they extend the pandemic. One thing you should realize, which blew my mind throughout the holidays, so people said, I'm gonna do this after the holidays. Do you realize going through a pandemic, you realize all of 2020 was one big ass holiday? It's so much time for you to study, so much time for you to pick up a new skill, so much time for you to say, let me create new relationships. The world to some extent was put on pause. And if you realize that 2020, you didn't pick up a new skill, if this stimulus check doesn't help you pick up a new skill, it's not that you lacked opportunity, you just were lazy and you lacked discipline. Ooh, you probably don't want to hear that right now. Oh, well, drop in the comment section below. Did you think I was here to be liked? No, because you're spending my money too. Number three, third question you should ask yourself is, who do you know that can show you and teach you? Who can be in your corner? Is it somebody that's a friend, a colleague, a coworker that knows somebody, knows somebody who can equip you to make sure this 2021 can be the year that you stop worrying about money for the rest of your life? If your answer to that third question is a flat no, nobody's in your corner, you don't have a blueprint, you don't know helping you, please do yourself a favor. Please like our business page, Money Smart Guy. Please follow if you're watching this on YouTube. Please subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted next time we upload our next episode, but I'm encouraged. I'm excited for you in 2020. I'm fired up the things we got going on. I want you, by the way, in 2020, we're about to pour it on. Keep in mind, there's three major ways to make money in our country. It's earned income, passive income, portfolio income. I want you to have massive ways for you to have income, cash flow coming your way. I want you to be at the end of 2021. Surprise, I got this check. I got this dividend check. I got this commission check. Where's all this money come from? I want you to be surprised. How? Follow the YouTube channel and find out. How? Reach out to somebody in your local community that can show you how. It's just not reserved to me. There's a lot of success stories of people making things move in 2020 into 2021. I just happen to potentially be one of them that you might want to consider having on your social media profile and somebody you subscribe in your feed. That being said, guys, Happy New Year 2021. I'm encouraged by it. I'm fired up for you. I want the best for you. If you're looking for a word of encouragement, if you're looking for somebody to help you along the way, listen, you found them. And by the way, side note, if you haven't followed me on Instagram, check us out behind the scenes. That, that way you can tell whether or not I'm full of it or not, right? Instagram stories all day long. Watch us work. That being said, guys, Happy New Year 2021. I'm your Money Smart Guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart. Continue to live smart. And be money smart today.